We treat race as if it is a permanent feature of the social, psychological, political uh, landscape of the society. And by doing so, we forfeit our opportunity to see it as what it really is, something with a pretty short lifespan, you know, four or five hundred years old, depending on when you sort of mark the start of it. We're failing to see that we need to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time to understand that the social construct of race has us in deep, deep peril, and we need to be anti-racist, and we need to monitor discrimination based on uh, perceived differences. And at the same time, stop perpetuating the falsity of those perceived differences. One of the examples I use in the book is uh, the U.S. government's uh, practice of getting racial statistics through insisting that all of us self-racialize in the census. And I promote um, at least a discussion of changing the way we go about that. And I'm not the only one who does that, and I give credit in the book for this. But um, as a quick example, if it's the case, and it is, that discrimination based on race has to do with how one is perceived, not really how one perceives oneself, then might it make more sense to ask folks on the census, for example, how do others tend to perceive you in terms of racial identity? And have you experienced any sort of mistreatment based on how others perceive you in terms of that? Now, that needn't be completely decoupled you know, from the invitation to self-racialize because a lot of people take pride uh, in their racial identity. But it would, I think, make a very clear statement to people that we are, understand that this is a false construct. And we understand that the key to discrimination is how others perceive you, so let's start tracking that. You know, sometimes folks say very sadly, well, if we don't call it race, we'll call it something else, but we're always going to categorize people in a way that ends up in hierarchy. That, I think, is a sad but very important uh, statement. But there's also some, some hope in that, because once we embrace that susceptibility and that proclivity, that bad cognitive habit, we can again try to resist it. And not all habits you know, that we face in the world can be completely overcome, but they certainly can be minimized in terms of their effect. And I think that's the direction to move it in race. And the, I think the target shouldn't be race per se, but racialization. How do we stop thinking about each other in a way that leads to the product of race? Right? When we have that tendency, that reflex, to see someone who appears different from us, how do we stop ourselves and say, what does this superficial difference actually mean? Am I going to load it up with attributions that don't make any sense, end up alienating that person from me, and end up with me treating them in a way that's unjust, or perhaps the opposite?